So today I'm going to be showing you how I turn this plain binder into something a little more fun. So this is how it started out. It's just a plain see-through binder. This is from Wilco's and it was two pounds. It came with a few inserts and I also bought some extra ones to go in there, but that's how it started out. And then this is what I've done to mine. I'm gonna try my best to not have the glare from the light on it all the time. I'm gonna talk you through the outside first and then I'm gonna open it up and show you what I've done inside as well. Just a side note, it is raining really hard outside. Um, so if you hear rain on my windows, I'm really sorry. So first of all, the most obvious thing that I've done to it is covered it in watermelons. I did this using some packing tape that I got from Paper Chase, which is covered in watermelons. The good thing about this packing tape in particular is it's one of those patterns which joins up um, at either side. So here, this little line you can see, that's obviously two strips of tape. I tried to join it up as accurately as I could, but as you can see here, it's very, very slightly offset, but that isn't highly noticeable from a glance, so I wasn't too worried about that. This was probably the most tedious part. It did take a few tries on a few of the strips to get them completely matched up so they weren't highly noticeable, but I got there in the end. Once I stuck a strip down, I would trim the excess off of either end. It just made it easier to go onto the next strip without having flaps of tape hanging off the edge. The other part which was slightly tedious to do was the spine because it had these two little, um, I don't know what they're called, they're the things which attach the um, rings to the inside of the binder. So yeah, it just made it a bit difficult. Also the width of the spine is a little bit thinner than the actual tape. So what I did is I, I lined it up to one edge and had one overhang um, and then in this crease it's kind of scored so there was enough space to very gently go down it with my scissors. Once I covered the whole thing in tape I then went around the edges with clear tape just to kind of seal it all in. So I did that all around the edges on the front and the back. I also did it on these edges and also down the scored creases. Basically anywhere there was an edge of the watermelon tape, I would put a bit of clear tape over it. I then decided to put some charms on the spine. Because the binder is plastic, it wasn't too difficult to hole punch. I didn't actually use my classic hole punch for this. You know, you can get hole punches which reach a bit further in. So yeah, I used one of them to hole punch them. And I just put a couple of charms going through it. Inside I made a dashboard which I made it exactly the same way as I make any other dashboard for any of my other planners. This is also an alternative to the tape for decorating the outside. Obviously I put sticky notes on this because I don't need it to show through because I've got decoration on the outside but if you decided that you didn't want to cover it in tape or you couldn't find tape then this is definitely a good easy alternative for decorating the outside. I made a couple of dashboards these are actually the binders which I'm giving away so I'm gonna leave the dashboards in it and give them to the winners so that was a way to use the dashboard decoratively. In here I've decided to use the dashboard as a dashboard to stick some sticky notes on. I then got my first divider which I haven't decorated yet because I don't actually know what I'm gonna be using this for. So I felt like it was best to leave that blank and I've done that with all my dividers. In the first divider, I've actually got a journaling card. It's basically an alternative dashboard or a mini dashboard. It is just one of the six by four journaling cards, I think. It's one of the bigger ones and it had some fruit on it and one of the fruit is watermelon. So obviously it just kind of went well with this. But stuck on it, I just have some craft paper sticky notes um, and some little sticky tabs as well, which are some of my favourite. I've then got the grid paper insert, um, and then it's onto the second divider. In the second divider, I have the blank paper and the line paper inserts. In the third divider, I have cut and punched some of the note paper from the notebook that I bought, and the lines on it are different colours, so it's not boring and grey. And then the last section, I have all of the zip pockets. I use zip pockets like this in my planners and also in my Fodoris. In my Fodori, I had a zip pocket for ages and ages with all of my die cuts in, but now I have more die cuts than I have room in my Fodori, so I keep them in a tub. But this is a good way to store die cuts because they stay flat, they're not gonna get scratched or moved about or bent. I did think that this binder would be really good for any journaling projects because you have the separate inserts that you can take out. You can also organize them with the dividers. And then of course at the back you have 
storage for basically any decorating things. In the second pocket I have some rainbow tabs which I got from Paper Chase. I then have a blank spare pocket and the last pocket I've been using as a pencil case. But yeah that is how I've personalised and set up my binder that I got from Wilco's for £2. I know that this particular binder isn't available outside of the UK. Wilco's does have a website but they don't ship worldwide but I'm hoping this video has given you some ideas on how you can buy a cheap planner or binder and completely personalise it to what you need it for. So yeah thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.